Hello, I'm Antonio Mora. This is the News and News.com Day in Brief on April 5th at about 7 p.m. To highlight what he called a colossal surge that is, quote, overwhelming our immigration system, President Trump today visited Calexico, a California border town. He consulted with immigration officials and bluntly addressed anyone thinking of coming to the U.S. saying, our country is full, turn around. Trump blamed Democratic obstruction for the crisis on the southern border and denied that he had changed his mind about closing the border because, quote, I may shut it down at some point. He again insisted that he wasn't closing it now because Mexico has been absolutely terrific for the last four days in stopping the influx of migrants. Calexico is about 120 miles east of San Diego, and it's where a 30-foot segment of border fencing had been installed, the first project of its kind during the Trump administration. Trump hoped to use his emergency declaration to redirect taxpayer money from other accounts to build more border barriers. But as he visited, California and 19 other states requested a court order to stop money being diverted for wall construction. The ACLU has also filed a similar lawsuit. In another about face, Trump suddenly withdrew his nomination of Ron Vitello to head ICE. Vitello is the acting director of ICE, seemed to be cruising toward nomination, and was supposed to travel to Calexico today on Air Force One. Nobody at Homeland Security was reportedly notified, including Secretary Nielsen. Trump called Vitello a good man, but that, quote, we are going in a tougher direction. Officials are reportedly blaming White House aide Stephen Miller, who wants to replace longtime immigration officials with hardliners. The U.S. economy created 196,000 new non-farm jobs in March, about 10% better than expected. That's a huge rebound from the 20,000 created in February, indicating that might have been an anomaly and that the economy is not weakening as much as some feared. The unemployment rate held steady at a low 3.8%. The job gains were broad-based across a series of sectors. Wage gains slowed a bit, but still stayed strong at 3.2%. However, Trump repeated that the Federal Reserve should drop interest rates, saying the U.S. economy would climb like a rocket ship. He dismissed the risk that stimulating the economy with a cut in rates could be inflationary, arguing there is no inflation. Former Vice President Joe Biden joked twice today about the accusations from a number of women who say he touched them in a way that made them feel uncomfortable. Lucy Flores, the Nevada politician who first brought a complaint to light, was not happy about the jokes and others agreed. Biden made the comments during his first public appearance since the accusations. Afterward, he spoke about the accuser saying, I'm sorry I didn't understand them but saying, I'm not sorry for any of my intentions. I'm not sorry for anything I've ever done. I've never been intentionally disrespectful to anyone. Earlier, despite his own issues with accusations of misbehavior, Trump couldn't resist jabbing Biden, tweeting an edited video of Biden stroking his own shoulders. Biden responded sarcastically, tweeting, I see that you are on the job and presidential as always. Seven of the Democratic presidential candidates competed for Al Sharpton's approval today, speaking before his National Action Network conference in New York. They followed five others earlier this week. Sharpton is making, an issue of re making the issue of reparations to African Americans for slavery a sort of litmus test, publicly asking the candidates if they'd sign a reparations bill. They all said yes. The African American vote is crucial to any Democratic candidate, especially in the primaries, but also in the general election. Local Congresswoman Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez also spoke at the conference today and got more applause than any of the presidential contenders, including the ones who are African American. Boeing says it will slow production of 737 MAX jets in the wake of two deadly crashes. The company's CEO also apologized, saying Boeing is sorry for the lives lost in the recent 737 MAX accidents and that it is relentlessly focused on safety to ensure tragedies like this never happen again. Meanwhile, the FAA said it is forming an international team to launch a new review of the safety of the 737 MAX. Already, federal aviation regulators have ordered Boeing to fix a second problem with the MAX flight control system. The Trump administration is fighting Democratic congressional demands to see his tax returns. One official reportedly said, this is a hill and people would be willing to die on it, arguing that it is abuse and overreach by Congress. Trump lawyers wrote the Treasury Department today to fight the tax return request. 
House Democrats are going after his finances on multiple grounds, including whether he dodged payroll taxes for undocumented immigrants at one of his golf clubs and asking a bank for documents on Trump businesses. British Prime Minister Theresa May is begging the EU to extend the Brexit deadline to June 30. The EU had previously denied the request, but the head of the EU Council is now floating the possibility of an extension for a year if the UK joins the European Parliament elections next month. May said she is beginning preparations to hold those elections, something British leaders had hoped to avoid because of its plans to quit the Union. However, uh, or meanwhile, uh, top-level talks between May's government and Labor Party leaders are reportedly on the brink of collapse. We have all those stories and much more updated around the clock seven days a week at newsandnews.com, where you will find all you need to know in one place. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking on the right of your screen just below this video. Please follow us on Facebook at Real News and News, and follow me on Twitter at Amora TV. I'll see you again tomorrow. Actually, I won't see you again tomorrow. I'll see you again on Monday. Have a great weekend.